If you're interested in making better use of the sun's energy, it sure would be nice to live in a house with a roof oriented in the right direction. But unfortunately, this is not always an option. Bob from Baltimore lives in a building with a flat top roof, but he still found a way to make use of the available sunlight. He did this by making and installing his own flat plate serpentine collectors. Here are a few more examples of homemade serpentine flat plate collectors. All these collectors have one thing in common. They have 60 foot long copper serpentine flow tubes pressed into homemade aluminum absorber plates. So, uh, what's so great about serpentine collectors anyhow? I heard that commercial collectors use parallel flow tubes. This is true, but parallel flow collectors require numerous solder connections. They use materials and methods beyond the skills and budget of most homeowners. Bonding copper flow tubes to copper absorber plates is at best difficult without the right equipment. Large manifolds at the top and bottom are used to connect small flow tubes in parallel. For this reason, parallel flow tube systems may be used for either open loop or closed loop systems. Commercial collectors do an excellent job of converting light into heat, but they can also be a difficult and expensive project for most do-it-yourselfers. Although serpentine collectors are mostly limited to closed-loop applications, they are better suited for do-it-yourself projects since the construction materials are commonly available and there are less solder connections to worry about. A serpentine flexible PEX flow tube may be used to gather heat from aluminum absorber plates, but the rigidity of a copper flow tube has the advantage of being held in place with side and center supports. PEX flow tube and copper flow tube collectors are assembled differently, with their own set of advantages and disadvantages. My flat plate serpentine collector design involves pressing and holding copper inside the bends of an aluminum flashing material. Two of my serpentine collectors require two 60-foot coils of 3 8 inch copper and one roll of 20 inch by 50 foot aluminum flashing. For serpentine solar collector construction details, see homemade flow tube construction and homemade absorber plate construction. Thank you for your interest in renewable energy technology. Okay, we've finished with the hard part of our collector. We've made our absorber plate and we've made our flow tube. Now, of course, your actual absorber plate, you're going to be using two absorber plates and they're going to be 20 inches wide as opposed to 16 inches wide. You'll be using two of them and they'll be 8 feet long. And your flow tube is going to be 60 feet long. Well, uh, this is just being used for a demonstration. Okay, we're almost finished. Now, uh, another thing you can do to increase the efficiency of your collector will be to put a little more insulation. You're going to have a half inch insulation underneath the absorber plate, and underneath that you're going to have a half inch sheet of plywood. Uh, but uh, something else you can do, uh, and this will support the flow tube and also add insulation. You take your half-inch solid insulation, isocyanurate, foil side up, 
and the foil uh, will uh, transfer heat a little better. And uh, so you put your insulation in like this. Now it's best to actually glue the insulation to the back of your absorber plate with uh, contact cement. Okay. So we're just going to put it in like this. All right. Now, uh, the, second, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, fastening your absorber plate to your collector. Remember, we want to have a good bond between the absorber plate and the flow tube. Now, one way of doing it would be to use some kind of glue, but uh, we need a little more than that because it's going to pop out. I don't care what kind of glue you use. Uh, if you try to glue something to aluminum, it's not going to stick very well, especially when at elevated temperatures. So, what, we're going, what we'll be doing is we'll uh, take the absorber plate uh, with the flow tube in it, uh, and then we're going to add a strip on the edge of the collector. This is the edge of the collector, and we have a support strip. And that, that will hold the uh, flow tube in place and press it into the absorber plate. Okay? So, uh, we're going to have one uh, support on both sides of the collector, but that's still not enough. We need uh, additional support, so we're going to have a central support uh, that presses into the flow tube, like this. And this will be in the center of the collector. Now the screw won't be coming from the top, it'll be coming from the bottom into a, a central support strip. Now be sure you don't drill through your flow tube after all that work. You don't want to do that. That's the kind of thing I would do. Anyway, you, you can see how this, this presses the uh, copper, the copper uh, flow tube, right into the aluminum absorber plate. Makes pretty good contact. Now, no matter how uh, good the contact is, when you make these bends, there's going to be some irregularities in the copper. So there'll be some voids. Now that's something you want to avoid. So you want to avoid the voids. So what you can do, after you're all done with your collector, the last thing you'll do is you're going to paint this with uh, tar. Now not just not just tar right out of the bucket, but you're going to mix this with mineral spirits to thin it down. Uh, so it's like, uh, it's like a paint, uh, like a thin paint. And that'll seep right into the cracks like this. And then you put it out in the sun for a day and let it dry out. And uh, that makes an excellent uh, connection between your copper and your absorber plate. Anyway, that's the basic idea of uh, a serpentine collector using uh, an aluminum absorber plate and a uh, copper serpentine flow tube.